Now there is only one thing that is worse than skying your brand new driver or fairway wood. Actually no there isn't. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club. Now, I don't do many golf coaching videos. Actually, I don't do any golf coaching videos. And there's two reasons that I don't do that. Number one, there's a lot of incredibly good coaching videos already out on this platform. If you want to know how to cure your slice or hit a draw or gain yardage, lower your spin, whatever it might be, it's out there. Unless the laws of physics don't change, they are going to be able to fix, inform, whatever you want them to do for your golf swing. Number two, you can't diagnose yourself on YouTube. So you might think that you have a big slice, but in reality, you've got a push slice, which means your club face is open. So you could have a fantastic swing path, yet you spend the next two months trying to get an in to out path, causing bigger and bigger push slices. That being said, when it comes to skying your woods, and I know a lot of my lessons, if I meet them for the first time, the first thing I do is go through their bag and look at what are their woods looking like. If they're pristine on the roof, i.e. no sky, sky marks whatsoever, or there's no ball marks from the heel, the toe, whatever it might be, that gives me a lot of information about someone's golf swing. And if you do have that annoying and don't trust me, we've all done it. Like, if you've been playing this game long enough, whether it's when you were 12 or when you started the game when you were 40 or 50 or 60, when you first sky your wood, whether it's brand new or second hand, but that mark wasn't there at the start of the round, it's the most infuriating thing in the world. And it's the one bit of advice that I can give pretty much all people that have this annoying sky mark, whether it's your driver, your rescue, your hybrid, that you're doing certain things at impact that aren't correct. And I'm gonna tell you what you need to do different. I'm not gonna tell you how to fix it. As I said, there's tons of coaching videos out there and I don't know what your swing looked like. Actually, all of your swings are gonna be completely different and there might be numerous ways and differences between all of your swings to give you the same effect, i.e. steep and coming across the golf ball. I'm just gonna show you now what's happening and what you need to change. So let me know if this is your golf game. I bought this G400 3 wood. I'll show you the price that I paid for it, 90 pounds including postage, which I thought was a great deal. Probably didn't look at the photos well enough or the photos weren't, well, showing the problem, let's say. But I can tell a lot about this man's golf swing. Number one, his nine iron is his favorite club and his seven iron is the longest club in terms of irons in his bag. He hits his six, five and four iron exactly the same distance. Can't hit driver, can't hit three wood off deck, loves his five wood or seven wood however, and they go equally as far as his driver when they connect with it. This is the sign that's gonna be on pretty much the majority of his woods and his rescues. And he has quite a strong grip. Would I change that strong grip? No because that is gonna make his golf game a lot worse. The problem with a steep swing, a strong grip, and trying to hit the ball straight, is that inevitably, you're gonna end up with a lot of these kind of marks on your woods, especially if it's wet, it's in the winter, stone, mud, dirt gets in between the ball and the club. Now, I talk about impact a lot, and impact is very important. And with a lot of my lessons, this is what we try and talk about, or at least get our head around. The ball doesn't know what your swing looks like. So if we can change what this is doing at impact, well, you're gonna stop seeing that mark as much. So even though all your swings look completely different, this is what your three wood driver, five wood, all of your clubs pretty much look like at impact. That's exaggerated, but that's pretty much the point. Hence why, if you hit the ground first and then put a ball there, and that dirt bit gets between the ball and your club, well, I think it's pretty clear to see 
why you keep getting this mark. So, what do we need to change? Number one is rather than having that, we need that. Now, unfortunately, we can't get that unless we stop this. I hope everyone understands, by the way, the blue tee is the left-hand side of the fairway, the yellow tee is the right-hand side of the fairway. This is the side of the club that you should be using, or this way around, I should say. So, we can't change this until we change this. So, we need to make sure the club's coming this way, hence into out. And by the way, I don't really care if you hit a fade or a draw, but you need either this or this. The majority of people that see this mark probably have this. Therefore, that's why as humans, you're doing the right thing by the way, you figured it out, you're closing down this club face to obviously get the ball to start enough this way to then come back into the fairway. Hence why you've all got fades when you do finish on the target, which is the important bit. So, we need to make sure the club comes more this way and the face needs to point this way maybe a tiny bit up with the driver but all fairways utilities whatever it is you have to hit down or at least bruise the ground so this with this pointing this way now unfortunately with this game you can't change one thing without the other because you come across the ball and because you have a closed club face if you were to open that maybe adopt a neutral grip like the magazines tell you to do all of a sudden the ball is now perfectly square which is very good However, because you come across it, you're getting this left to right and you're missing the fairway 60 yards to the right. And this is why, by the way, you've got a strong grip. You have to have a strong grip so that club face is close to the target so that you start it to the left and then it fades back in. All of a sudden, that might not work, so you're aiming more and more left, which means you come across it even more. Maybe you start missing it left now because you've got such a strong grip, you actually hit it, club face is square, and you've launched it left and you've gone, oh, I've just hit it straight. So then you push your hands forward and now you push your hands forward, that leading edge is more likely to come and hit down on that golf ball. It always escalates. And it's only because as humans, we try and find problems and we have compromises. And don't get me wrong, compromises definitely work in certain situations. For this to work and for you to stop having this particular shot on the top of your woods, we have to get the club going more this way. And I'm not saying you have to hit a draw. I'm not saying you have to hit it straight. You could even come across the ball slightly. You could even come across the ball into out slightly, but slightly is the important word. Slightly into out, slightly across the golf ball. Five to seven degrees so that you have a 20 yard draw or 20 yard fade with your woods. What you can't have is a 60 yard, 80 yard slice. So, if you can learn without me being there, and I don't care how you do it, as long as you do it, if you can learn to get this club to purely do this through the gate, hitting the ground, it's an important one because if you're in fairways, this isn't your driver by the way, if you're hitting fairways off the ground, and this is more likely to happen with your fairways than it is with your driver, if you hit the ground between the gate and you don't hit this blue one like that, you're doing something right. And if you can do it at this chipping level, guess what? You might be able to do it at the pitching level. So then you get it slightly bigger and faster and then building up from that. If you don't hit the ground between the gate, you're gonna to top the ball. Hence why you probably started doing this in the first place because it's a lot easier to hit down on the ball when you come across it. It's all about weight transfer. It's all about timing. It's all about practice. You can even move the gate to help you. So if you push this one in, that one out, and you stand here and you get used to the idea of that club moving more this way and exaggerate it, exaggerate it a lot so that when you go and play golf, you don't have to think about it. Nothing worse than standing over the golf ball completely forgetting what you're trying to do and going, oh, get it this way. Because then you'll top it or you'll shank it and you'll go, well, that's a load of rubbish. This is for the driving range, the garden, the bedroom, if you've got a tall ceiling. In, out, moving this way. And then get bigger and then get bigger. And even if your swing does this, and then comes this way, that's great. What happens if you have the most shallow swing in the world? Doesn't matter, as long as you're able to hit the ground consistently and get the club to go this way with a club pointing towards the target. All of your swings are gonna be completely different. And without seeing all of you individually, it's gonna be very difficult to help everyone. But I do know if you can physically do this, coming through, not really steep, but coming through, 
getting used to the idea of that club working on the inside. If it's the driver, we want to hit up on the golf ball, but we want to make sure we're going through this gate. What we don't want to do is hit both of these tees on the way through. I think I've just done my first coaching video on this channel, and I didn't even mean to. Anyway, that's how to stop that. Any questions, do put them down below. Um, uh, by the way, when I told you that I can tell a lot about someone's club, see the two little like marks on the top of this crown? That is because the gentleman had two alignment sticks in his, uh, or maybe one alignment stick in his bag, and he's basically put the three wood down in disgust. With the head cover still on, and that training uh, alignment stick's gone up the sleeve and then hit the crown there. He probably did it after he topped this, and it's a two for one special and damaging your three wood. Um, uh, guys, let me know what you think on the video. Um, as I say, really doesn't matter what your swing looks like, it's all about impact and if you can do it at a very slow minimal level, i.e. chipping and wedge play, then maybe you can do it with your pitching and if you can do it with pitching, maybe you can do it with a three quarter swing and then maybe you might be able to do it with a full swing. Trying to get yourself to going from massively out to in to massively into out in an hour session, two hours session, a week session, a month session is just never going to happen and you're going to hit even worse shots and you're going to be, well that's rubbish and then you'll stick with your steep cut. And if you play good golf and you enjoy it, then by all means play golf with your steep cut. Leave this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later.